Hello. In this video, I'm going to show how Black can fight for initiative with the Schliemann Gambit uh, or with the Schliemann Defense. The, the opening in question arises after the moves um, in, the sp in the Spanish opening and after bishop to b5, Black goes f5. This undermines the white center and although it exposes the Black King slightly, it um, also um, allows black to fight for development in the center in some pretty effective ways. Th the main line here is knight to c3, and then after black exchanges, uh, he can challenge the center again with knight to f6. And in this game I was playing with the black pieces, so my opponent chose queen to e2, which is one of the main lines. Um, Black continues to occupy the center now that he got rid of the e pawn on e4. He now can challenge the center with pawn to d5. White has nothing better than to exchange on f6, and this allows black to strengthen the center further and take with the g pawn on f6. Now the e5 pawn is, is well defended. If white lets black have it the way it is, he will just have to fight the strong center and, and have nothing to show for it. So he normally challenges it immediately with the pawn to d4. Here black could try to protect the e5 pawn but that's really futile so he instead goes ahead with the development of his king side. And the bishop goes to g7 which is a slightly strange diagonal but the way the pawns are placed in the center, even though the diagonal is now closed, it will free up really quickly. To continue the plan of his last move, white exchanges on d5, so, sorry, on e5, and black castles, as he had intended with his previous move. Here, white should realize that the pawn has been poisoned, and if he continues to do pawn grabbing, he will have to fight the superior development of his opponent. And he normally does here something like pawn to e6, or he does first exchange on c6, and then he play pawn to e6 anyway, I think. Instead, my opponent played a very natural move, e takes on f6. But here, however, black has very few dangers to face, and in fact, after he exchanges on f6 with the queen, he has very strong initiative on the f-file. And with this in mind, uh, it is the question how white would be able to to face the pressure on this knight. White played the most natural move and he castled. However, this allows for black to develop the bishop to g4 and pin the knight. So a more interesting option would have been to maybe prevent it with pawn to h3. White has you know, a bit of time for this. Um, then black could go for something like queen to g6 attacking on g2 and white could then maybe force the draw with the repetition. So h3 was interesting. The main line here, however, is queen to d1. It is to try to gain time by attacking the d5 pawn, and then the variation goes like this. Uh, there's a tactical trick here. Queen to d4, queen e7, attacking the queen, so the queen has to move, then black goes here, and here he captures this piece, and, and again he prevents white from castling, so he, ha so he has strong compensation here. And he won here in the in the game between two strong players. Sorry, uh, yes, he won. In the game, white played the most natural move, castle. Notice that so far white plays very natural moves. He castles, he, he grabs pawns, attacks my center. So all the moves that white plays here are very natural. But so are the moves that black plays. So he goes bishop to g4. Now he simply threatens to regain the pawn but maybe he threatens to gain more. Knight d4 now is a very strong threat because the knight is pinned. 
white was reluctant to exchange on c6 or to do anything else, so he played pawn to c3. To illustrate the point, it is now too late to play h3, because then comes knight to d4. And this is devastating. So he played pawn to c3, but this is not a delay that black can really afford. And, sorry, the white can afford. And I could here immediately recapture the pawn. But that felt like that I would be fighting against two bishops, and I didn't really see much of an advantage here. So it made sense to maintain the pressure a little bit. And now I have a strong threat of um, either rook takes or bishop takes, and because of the pressure on the g file, white would not be able to recapture properly. At this point I couldn't even see what could white possibly do. The interesting variation that I had in mind was if he tries to avoid the pin with tempo, then I just take, he takes, I take on b5, then he takes on f8, and then I take here. And here black is up a piece. This is all I could see. If white goes bishop to d3, and queen to h5, and the threats of rook takes f3 are really deadly here. The trick not to fall for is after bishop to d3, if black takes here, then the correct response is to take back with the queen, and because the queens are both attacked, this is fine for white. In fact, white's probably better here. But the only defense here was queen to d3. And because the queen escapes and offers the exchange of queens at the same time, it's hard for black to prove a significant advantage here. All he gets here is something like this, and he later gets to pick up this this pawn. In the game, my opponent went king to h1, and I think this is a, a losing move, because after queen to h5, there is no defense against rook to f3. It is just deadly. The, the point is not to recapture the pawn, the point is to attack the white king. And white played rook to g1 here, let's say if he tried something like rook to... Sorry, if he tried pawn to h3, then I could play this anyway. And there's no, there's no recapturing here, and this wins the queen for black. So white played rook to g1, but this is in fact accepting that he has to give up the queen. And white here is down the queen, and he lost very quickly. Uh, notice that in here, in this position, black takes with a rook on f3. And this is important because the bishop here is a more dangerous piece than the rook. So we want at the end to be recapturing with the bishop. So that, we, so that we give this fork and attack both the king and the queen at the same time. The catastrophe comes on the light squares because the white bishop here is out of play. Even if it had gotten exchanged here, it would still be a missing piece. So, so this light squared bishop is a, is a major monster in the Schliemann for black. And this is the piece that you want to capitalize on if you play the Schliemann as black. So in the game, the only counterplay that the white ha here has is to build up pressure on the g-file and that's what he tries with this but black can easily defend against it and he has effectively a queen for a rook so the game didn't really continue very long there were a few mo more moves being played but uh, in the end it was all very clear that black is completely winning here um, I hope this game illustrates the, the strong initiative that black has in the Schliemann and that with natural moves white can very often get into a lot of trouble and at the same time black's position is easy to play and natural moves with attacking the center and developing pieces, the pieces, putting pressure on the e-file uh, and on the f-file 
um, can lead to quick success quite often. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.